Um, here comes a very important thing. And I, I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit slower, even though some of you might say, oh, I understand the problem. But our, uh, our work today that we're going to be doing, it's very essential that you guys understand the difference of something or expect to understand when I say factor. If I was going to say, give me a set of two factors, okay, what would you say? What would be a set of two factors for six? Two and three. Now, the reason why we say this is a set of two factors because is two times three equal to six? Yes. Could I say also multiplying two times three gives me six? Yes. Could I say the product of two and three is six? Could I say six is the exact same thing as two and three? It's just written differently, right? But I mean, their values are the same. Yes? No. The value of two times three is not the same as six? Yeah, it's written differently. Yes, it's written differently, but the value of 6 and 2 times 3 is the same, though, right? Yes. OK. I just want, like, I could write a mathematical equation saying 6 is equal to 2 times 3, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm factoring something. Do you know what factoring means? If I say to factor something, what am I asking you to do? Do you know? Right. What you're doing, yeah, and that's, you know, when we do prime factorization, what we do is we break down a number to its prime numbers, right? And each one of those prime numbers, what do we do to those to get us our original pr number? What operation will we do? Yes, but if I prime factorize a number, ye when you break down a number, if I was to prime factorization 6, I break it down to 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are prime numbers. But what I want you guys to understand, especially when you're sitting in the back without looking over here, is you see that these two numbers are being multiplied by each other. And that's the same thing. When I tell you to factor something, you're setting it up as a product of its factors. 6 and 2 times 3. So ladies and gentlemen, if I tell you to factor this, without even understanding how to factor, you know that I'm going to have to write this as a add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Multiply. I have to write this as a product of its two factors. This is pretty easy to write as a product of two factors, right? There's only 2, 3, negative 2, negative 3, 6, 1, negative 1, negative 6, right? Those are the only factors. This, it's a little bit more difficult, but the process that we talked about, uh, we could use this x here, negative, or that's positive 15, negative 8. What two numbers multiply to give you 15? Add to give me negative 8, right? And then we could use this. Remember, this has only worked when a was equal to 1, because negative 5 times negative 3 gives me positive 15, right? And negative 5 plus negative 3 gives me negative 8. Then, since x equals 1, I know that my two factors, which are my binomials in this case, have to be x times x. And then I just write negative 5 and negative 3. Now, I can always check my work by using how do we multiply binomials? Do you remember one of the processes we use? To multiply a binomial times a binomial? Uh, foil. foil technique, right? So you could always check your work, right? Because how do you check your work here? Did I factor this correctly? Is 2 and 3 both factors? Yeah, they give you 6. Here, it's not as easy as just multiplying. You have to apply the FOIL technique. With the glasses, could you turn around? Thank you. Does that make sense? Factoring it. So some of you got it wrong, or at least not all right, because some of you started solving this. Right? You, you threw an equal sign in there. Um, all I wanted you guys to do to factor this was just break it down into a product of two factors. Okay, And that was it. You didn't have to go any farther or do anything else. We are going to